Hi, I'm Kat and I play Red. Today we're going to go back in time. Back in time to when the streets were cobbled and horse-drawn carriages clattered down the streets. We're going back to 2006. We're having a look at Vernon Taxis which was the 2006 Critics Spiel des Jahres winner. Why are we looking at it now, 14 years on, you may ask? Number one, it's a great game. Uh, we've had this probably since about 2006 and it still gets a lot of play for us. But it's actually just been launched on Board Game Arena. So we thought we'd have a look at it so that you can go and play it there. Or go and buy the game. Up to you. Let's see how it plays. Back in the days, delivering posts was a very important job that was also very prestigious and literally people would be fighting for the title of postmaster, which is what you're doing in this game. You're going to be creating routes on the board and building post offices essentially in the different areas. So, a turn is pretty simple. What you're going to do is add a city card to your hand and play a city card in your route and then you have the option to score your route. However, you can get support from various officials that give you added bonuses. So, let's have a look on the cheat sheet what the officials do. The postal carrier here allows you to play two city cards instead of one. The postmaster allows you to draw two cards instead of one. The administrator lets you clear the display. So if there's nothing you want there, you just get rid of these six cards and replace it with six new ones. And then the last official who can aid you which isn't going to make a lot of sense at the moment, is the Cartwright. You can acquire a new carriage with two fewer city cards. This will make a bit more sense later on. So here are the carriage cards. The game will end in the round in which a player gains a seven carriage. You must take a three, then a four, then a five, then a six and a seven. You can't jump from... Oh, you can't jump from a four to a seven. You must go up the right. How do you gain carriage cards? Let's have a look. So, my turn summary, I can add a city card to my hand from the available ones here. I'm going to choose to use the postmaster this round, which lets me add two cards. Now, what I'm trying to do is create a route. So, I'm going to want to take two cards that actually connect. So, I'm going to take Sigmaringen, oh, and on. So, these two cards go into my hand. And I have to place one in my display. So, for now, I'm going to place on. The display gets refilled and the next player has their turn. Coming back to me, I'm, do you know, there's a lot of cards I like there. So I'm gonna take two cards again while I can, put them in my hand and place a card. So, Ulm is here on the board. So next to Ulm, I can put any of the connected towns. In this case, I'm gonna go this route. Now, I can actually choose to place this card on either side of Ulm. I'm going to go that side for now. I'm going to turn these around so you can have a look better. So I'm going to do that. And again, the display refills. Now, in my next go, there's not very much here I want. So I could choose to discard all of these or I could start working towards my next route which I think is going to be what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this card 
And no, I'm going to take the one card. So I can use the postal carrier, which will allow me to place two cards on my route. So I'm actually going to play Zurich, which leads on from the bottom here. I've also got Stuttgart. Now, because of the way I've placed my cards, Stuttgart has to lead on from Ulm. Now I have a minimum of three cards in my route. I can choose to close it and score it, which I'm going to do. So I have at least three locations. So I can take my level three carriage, which I put here on top of my office card. Now I get to place some post offices. Now your choice here when it comes to placing is you can either place these in all the regions of the same color, which in this case would be Stuttgart and Ulm, or I can place one in each of the different colored regions, which would be there, there, and there in this case. Now, there's benefits to both. I'm sure you've noticed these tiles on the board. So, this blue area here, if I end up with an office in Basel, Zurich and Innsbruck, I get to take the top tile here, which in this case would currently give me three points. However, once that one's gone, it becomes two and then one. So getting these as soon as possible will get you extra points. The other tiles available are up here. So the player who ends the game will take this tile and it will give them one point. Then if you manage to get offices in every single color region, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all nine regions, you get to take this tile for six points then five, then four, then three. So the tiles will give you a lot of your end game points. In this example, I'm going to place in those three, I've taken my carriage and I close my route. I discard these cards, put them in the discard pile. I didn't restock because I'm a bad person. So now my next carriage must be at least four long, then five long. There are also some extra points available for the first players to have carriages that are five, six, and seven long. So there's lots of ways to get points. The trick with this game is also to keep an eye on what other players are doing. If, for example, green has houses here and they have Ulm as part of their display, I know I'm probably not going to get this region before them, so I might give it up and concentrate on something else. So it's important to keep an eye on what the other players are doing. The other thing to note as well is you only have 20 offices. This is actually the other way the game can end. If a player places their last office, the game will end at the end of that round. Play continues with players taking turns, adding cards from the display and playing them and scoring them when they can. Now, let's look at a couple of examples. Let's say I have this card in my display. Now, this is connected to Freiburg, Stuttgart and Mannheim and none of those cards are available on the display. I could either use the administrator to discard all of these cards, place six new ones and hope that something good came out, or I could have a look at what else is there compared to the cards in my hand. So in this case, I'm actually gonna take this one and this one. The problem being, 
I can't actually add to this carriage. So I have to discard it without scoring. But then I get to place something else and I am going to place here. The downside to that obviously is if I had four or five here, I could close the route, but I wouldn't score a carriage. I would however score any of these tiles if they were still available. However, it's also going to put you behind on the race for the carriages. So let's have a look at what else is coming up. Now this turn, I think I'm only going to take one card, but I'm going to place two on my route. So we're going to place Nuremberg and Purcell. So now, although I had to discard my route, I'm now building this up nicely. This is where the strategy comes in the game, is deciding when to just give up on a route and when to use the particular officials that are available to you each round. They're also shown really neatly on the board here, as well as in these really chunky cardboard player aids, which we like. See, I could at this point, if I hadn't placed two cards, use the cartwright and close this route for five. However, because I don't have the four, I wouldn't have access to the five, I'd get the four and place that. Play continues until either a player gets a seven carriage or a player plays their last office. Play to the end of the round and then add up scores. The way the game scores is points from your topmost carriage. So let's say I had a, I'd done a four and a five and a six. This is how I play in real games. So this would score me seven points. If I'd ended the game, I'd get an extra one point. And then you're gonna gain points for all these little tiles that you've gained over the course of the game. However, once you have that total, you then need to subtract from it the number of offices you have left. So, bad example, but in this case, I'd have minus 17 because I've only placed three on the board. So, it's important to get these down, not only to score the tiles for the regions, to get your roots, but also because they're gonna give you negative points at the end of the game. Fernand Taxis is an oldie, but a goodie. So we've had it a very long time. It's one that still comes out for us. It plays well at two, three and four players, um, which obviously we appreciate very much at the moment. Um, there's also a couple of expansions. We have Power and Glory, which has a whole new map and some new mechanisms involving super speedy horses. Um, that's quite neat, even if just the other map. If you can't find any of the expansions, the base game on its own is brilliant, even if it is a bit brown. Um, but you can play it on Board Game Arena. So go and check it out there. Then if you like it, you can go and buy the game. So, Thumb Taxis, 2006 Critics Spiel de Jar winner. Have a look. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, thumbs up. Um, come and say hello to me on all the other socials, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at iPlayRed. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.